Hello everyone and welcome again. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded on this channel, but I've seen a lot of questions concerning INFPs and since I am one myself, I decided that I would lend some of my insight. And this is specifically about INFP girls. One thing that people have been asking a lot is how to get an INFP girl to trust you again or to hide how to get an INFP girl to like you or how to trust you. So I'm gonna be breaking this up into several ones. I'm guessing some of this covers all INFPs, but we have to also remember that everyone doesn't fit in one bag and guys are different from girls, even though INFP guys share a lot of traits that INFP girls share, they may go about it differently because men are different than women and they have different ways of expressing themselves. So this is specifically for girls and I'm speaking also from experience because I am one, I'm a girl and I'm an INFP. So this topic is how to get an INFP girl to trust you. All right, let's get started. First of all, if you're here and you want to know how to get an INFP girl to trust you again, this is not the video for you because that is near an impossible task. If you have hurt an INFP girl and you're working on regaining that trust, that is one hell and high water mission that you're going to have to go on. So that's a whole different video in and of itself. That is going to be a lot of work. Honestly, it's probably not worth it because once you've destroyed the trust of an INFP, it is very hard to get it back. This is if you're just being an INFP girl, maybe you guys just started dating or you like her and you guys, you feel like you're going down that path. So the first thing I will say is be genuine, be honest. That is a really big thing with INFPs. I can't speak for other Myers-Briggs personalities because there's some people who don't really care about that because they're not completely honest and they don't expect the other person to be honest. But with INFPs, honesty is paramount. We are very open. We're like childlike individuals. So before we can be open and honest with anyone, we expect them to be honest with us. If we see any hint of deception or whatever, we will lock up and run for the hills. That is not something that we wanna even deal with. She may not open up to you completely, but if you start opening up to her about who you are, whether it be bad or good, that is a really good start. The wonderful thing about INFPs is that they're not very judgmental. So if you tell her that, I was going to say, if you tell her you're a serial killer, you know, she will keep a secret. Now, if she's like a crazy, really liberal INFP, she might be like, help. But most INFPs I know of, including myself, if you tell us a really deep, dark secret, the deeper and darker the secret, the more apt we are to fall in love with you because we feel like for you to express that to us, that means that you really trust us and somebody putting their trust in us is very important because trust is so important to us. That is the number one thing. You want to be honest about your intentions. You want to be honest about who you are because if they start to fall in love with you, especially if they're not very experienced, they will fall hard and they will kind of put you on a pedestal. And the minute you break that, it is over. You've destroyed that person. So that goes in turn with don't break your word. If you are being honest and you say, or you, you're opening up about her, you say, hey, um, every Saturday I will come and get you. Every this, I will come and call you. Whatever you tell an INFP, she will take it to mean exactly what you say. So if you deviate from that and you break your word and then she's like, why didn't you such and such? And you're like, oh, because I decided to do this. She's going to think that you're deceptive because from what you say every Saturday, that's like, she's like a file cabinet. She will take the information that you gave her and like a little computer, she will say this equals this. So if all of a sudden you go from A equaling B to A equaling 16, she's gonna think you were dishonest and that's gonna cause her to pull away. Do not break your word. Now, of course there's leeway to do that. Like if something bad happens and you're like, my mom died or something like that, that's fine. And she may even give you a chance, but if it starts to become a pattern and we notice it's a pattern, we will run for the hills. We will start to lose attraction to you. And the, the horrible thing about the INFP is we have this weakness where we don't like to hurt people's feelings and we don't like confrontation. Where that can really be bad is if she's losing attraction to you, she won't say anything. She'll just start pulling away. She'll just start being quiet and you will feel yourself slowly losing her, thinking that there's hope to get her back when she's already made up in her mind that she has have nothing to do with you. That is a very horrible feeling. And you will know when you're starting to lose her. She'll still be nice to you, but she will go out of her way to avoid you. The next thing is don't be negative all the time. 
INFPs do not thrive well in a negative environment. Now, we will thrive when there's negative people in that if it's an only an individual, like, you know, INTJs tend to have this personality, they'll be very negative, but they INFPs can see through that, that they're not negative people, they just have a facade or that's their, their way. They're very cynical, but they're not negative. I've met negative INTJs and most of them are, yeah, most of them are very negative, but there are others that just do things because they're INTJs. Now, we can decipher from that, and sometimes we have to get to know the person to really know if they're being negative or they're just being themselves. There is a difference. But if you're, like, if she says something, and I know INTJs tend to do this because I'm dating one, and um, you're like, oh, I want to start this business and I want to do this, the INTJ or the ENTJ will seemingly try to shoot down the dream of the INFP. And it's not that they're trying to do that. Based on what they say, they're trying to poke holes in it to make sure that you don't waste your time. They're being practical. They're being logical. They're saying that won't work because if you do this, you need to have this to have this, which is perfectly fine. But there is a tactful way to do that. You can poke holes in their, in, in their, their, in their plans, but don't just come out when she's telling you her dreams and be like, yeah, that'll never work. That will, even though she's open to hearing stuff from you, she, she's, she's not going to want to be around you. She's like, no, this person is so freaking negative. I can't say anything positive around this person. I can't be happy around this person. And if she feels like you're sucking the energy from out of her, she'll leave you. She, she'll, she'll be like, mm, no, <laughs> no, I don't care how cute you are. I don't care how hot you are. I will leave because my feelings are really important. And if my mindset is bad around you or you have a bad vibe coming off of you, I, that's the quickest way for an INFP to cut off friendship from someone. Now, um, if they have a dream, don't tear it down. Learn how to communicate. Those all go in together. Don't be negative. Don't tear down their dreams. Learn how to communicate. That's kind of its own category right there. You can poke holes in her argument. Um, you can say something along the lines of, wow, you know, that's really cool that you want to do that. How would you go about doing it? Before you jump on her face and tell her that won't work, this won't work, ask her first how she intends for it to work. Because most of the time when INFPs share their dreams with people, we're not asking for you to work out a freaking plan for us. We're just telling you what's on our mind. We are sharing our, our mental process with you. And she may not even have gotten that far. She may say, I want to be a jockey, and she weighs 140 pounds. She's not asking you to tell her to do her whole life plan for her. She's literally just telling you what her immediate creativity um, or her immediate creative plan is, like what she wants, her aspirations. She wants to be rich. She wants to be this. Sometimes she's just sharing for the sake of sharing. And that's usually stuff that we keep to ourselves. And if we're really close to you and we trust you, when we tell you something, we're not ISTJs or INTJs. When we tell you something, it's not usually, 90% of the time, it's not because it's something we've planned out. It's something that we want. Like if we want to get a car, I'd like to own a car someday. But um, if you to go and tell her, oh, well, you'll never do that, the job you're working. No, that's that, don't do that. She already knows that. <laughs> That has nothing to do with why she told you. Now, what you should say, especially if you're someone that's not good with social communication, if you're an INTJ or an ENTJ or an ISTJ or an ESTJ and you have the, the, you usually blurt out things with an INFP, you cannot do that. You have to tell her along the lines of this. Oh, um, why do you want a car? First of all, because I want to do this. Well, how are you going to get one? Or what, what plans, you know, um, how are you planning to get one? that's cool. How are you planning to get one? Then that will cause her to think and start to go down that planning process. Most of the time, INT, um, INFPs will not tell you something because they've already had a process in place. INTJs will. They'll have a whole thing planned out before you, you or, or at least some idea of how they're going to get there before they tell anyone. And you ask them and they already know the whole thing because they're master planners and they're good at that. INFPs are more creative people. They're more feely. So they'll know they want something and they'll have to want the desire and then have it for a while before they even start planning it. And we're really bad at that sometimes. We'll go off our feelings and what we think we should do. And that's why it's good to be with a TJ that can at least plan for us or help us to do that more adequately. And um, so you'll start to ask her questions. How are you going to do that? 
well, I was planning, then it will start to get her to think because she probably didn't even have a plan in the first place. But now you've gotten her to think and you it doesn't feel like you're robbing her of that thought process. So she'll start to think and she'll say, well, I want a car. So I guess I'm going to have to work another job because understandably, if I don't, I can't get it within this time. You can ask her what the timeline is. When do you want to get one by and give her a deadline? Then you'd be surprised if you give an if you give an INFP room to make her own plans and start her on that planning process. They're not stupid. She's not stupid. She will work out a plan. You may have a better plan, especially if you're a TJ. Um, you may have a much better plan. You can say, can I help you? And she'll say, sure, because you let her speak. You've let her um, express herself. You didn't cut her off or make her seem like she's stupid for even wanting that. So when you when she finishes and you say, OK, some of that is a good plan or you say um, that's not really the best way to do that. I understand where you're coming from, but that's not really the best way to do that. And for a T, an INTJ or an ENTJ, this may be annoying because it may seem like you're beating around the bush with her. If you're more to the point and you're just you don't want to put on all the fluff and stuff, then just say, you know, um, don't say, oh, that will never work. Say there's a better way. And you know that this is a way that you should talk to an INFP because I know how I am with my boyfriend and I've done that to him too. And he was so offended because of how I said it. He said, no, don't, don't say, you know, um, maybe you should do it this way. Apparently that's very offensive to say to an INTJ. You should say, can I offer um, what I think is a better suggestion? And that won't be offensive. Because so, so the same way you'd feel offended someone talking down to you like that, do not do that to the INFP. She may be very kid-like, but she does not like being talked to like a child. Um, so let her open up. And if she plans out everything and she's like, honestly, I didn't get that far. If she says, I didn't even get that far, then you can step in and say, can I help you? And she's like, sure. If she says, I'm not really, I don't really want to get into that right now. Or she starts checking out then just wait till another day and do it by yourself and then come back and say, hey, I remember you said you wanted a car. I think the best way, do you want one? How soon do you want one? I have, I can help you. And just start making moves to say, hey, on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, here's a car. And you're like, this is a good idea. You'd have to work a job if you want it by this time or here's some other avenue of money to do this. Start to be, to go along the creative process with her for planning. So you come up creativity, uh, creatively with practical ways to get the car quicker and she will look at you like a freaking hero. But if you cut her down while she's talking to you, it will turn her off to you. She won't trust you because she'll feel like everything that comes out of her mouth, you tear down. So she won't feel comfortable talking to you. And so she'll find some other guy that's like, yeah, and he's listening and she'll more so feel comfortable around him and start hanging out with him more, which is what you don't want. So uh, that's for that. Also, if she opens up about something, listen, be attentive. The worst thing you can do to an INFP is when you're talking, she's talking and pouring her heart out about something and you're just like, eh, or you're playing with something else or you're not looking at her and she, what she'll usually do, she'll notice because we pick up on these social cues very, very easily and she'll notice she doesn't have your full attention even though you claim you do because you can hear. But to her, it's disrespectful if you're playing with your pen or doing something else and she takes it to mean that you don't want to listen to her. So she'll just shut up and you'll be like, no, I'm listening. And she's like, no, it's okay. And she'll walk away and it will be very hard to get her to talk to you again, especially if she's excited about something or heard about something, it will just cut her off to you. It will, it will, it will fuck up her whole day. Let's just say that. And it will be very hard to get her back. Then you'll have to do these emotional gymnastics to try and get her happy again. And once you've upset an INFP, it is very hard to make her feel better again. Because once she's emotionally invested in you somewhat or any at any ounce of investment she has in you, she's going to feel hurt when you do stuff like that. And she may even cut it off with you, depending on how long you guys have been dating or seeing each other. Okay, the next thing is let her know ahead of time if you're going to introduce her to someone. Have romantic surprises, but not social ones. INFPs don't like surprises. If you're being romantic and you're being adventurous, and they're not in the middle of doing something, you're like, come on, you're like, we're going to an adventure, I'm going to do this. You're like, yes, but if it's going to be a big social event, like you're carrying to a party, or you just show up at her doorstep with some friend, she's going to be like, o okay, you couldn't warn me ahead of time before bringing a whole other person that I have to entertain and wrap my mind around having to be extroverted to, like, that's going to, that's going to screw her up. Don't do that. Have romantic surprises, not social ones. 
maybe once in a while, like if you're going out to a place like France or something like that and you have the money to do that, then yeah, that's different. Um, but generally speaking, even though INFPs are not as good planners as the TJs, we still don't like being surprised. We still like to have some ounce of planning. We like to plan emotionally <laughs> for things. I swear, even family situations, if I have to go see my family, and I, I love my family, I do, but I don't need to be around them. I'm the kind of person that if I never see my mom and dad again, I'll miss them and I'll cry for my dad if I'm away, but I don't need to see them. Like, I don't, I'll talk to them once in a while, but I don't need to see you. I, 10 years can go by and we haven't talked and I'll still love them fiercely and I'll still send them gifts and st still do everything like that, but I don't need to talk to them. Like, this is just how I am. Like, I, I'm just not very social on that level um, with people. Same thing with my friends. I know some INFPs are really good friends to have, but we don't like talking on the phone with you. We don't like people to that degree. So if we're not prepared to spend time with a whole other person, especially if it's a stranger, even if it's a friend or family member, and we're not mentally prepared for that, that's going to screw us up. We're going to be so freaking drained. It's going to, we're going to have a lot of pressure. You'll find that if she's very open about her feelings, she'll have a, a face on her, like an attitude, and she'll be tired. And you'll find that she'll try to cut away and go somewhere quiet. She'll find excuses to go to the bathroom or to go outside, to be by herself, walk away. And that's her way of telling you, look, I didn't sign up for this. Even when we sign up for social events, it's very tiring for us. And the thing is, we're very social and people mistake us for extroverts. So we'll be entertaining because we don't want to hurt people's feelings and we're we're naturally nice people. So we like to be like that. And we, we're we social butterflies when we're around people, but that even more so will drain us because we have to put on that persona. It's very annoying. So if you're going to bring over someone or if, you, um, if you're going somewhere, let her know way ahead of time that you're going to stop somewhere. Don't say, hey, let's go to the park together. And let's have picnic. Like, let's have a picnic. And you're coming back, and we're going home. Then she's like, "Okay, you can." You're, you're like, "Can I stop by my friend real quick?" And you're like, "Are you freaking serious?" Like, that's how she's gonna look at you, and she's gonna be like, "Sure," <laughs> because in her mind, she's like, "We were supposed to go to the park, and then come home and relax. Now you want to stop and gallivant and have a whole freaking hour long or however long conversation with someone I don't feel like seeing right now. She didn't prepare for any of that. That will take her off. And if you do that as a pattern, she'll not trust you because she'll always be guarded and antsy around you. Not, you know, always wondering whether or not you're going to just off the fly, just force her into another social event. So what she'll start to do is just kind of, cut herself away from you and not want to go out with you or want to have a way to get away, like her own car. So if you are somewhere together, she'll just leave. And you don't want that. Now, the other important thing is spend time alone with her. We like her alone time. We're introverts. We like her alone time. But the weird thing about an INFP, and I think this is most other um, personalities as well, is if we like spending time alone, but we really like somebody we won't mind spending time alone with them. That's very important. So if you spend time, she, you may have to bring to tear her away from her work or whatever she's doing. Um, it would be very hard because if she's in the, in the middle of a creative process, she'd be like, can I have a second? And then if you mess up her creative process, she might get a little bit annoyed. But that's still important to her. The fact that you want to spend time with her, that makes her trust you because it makes her believe that you actually like her. The other thing is celebrate her crazy childlike creativity and don't tell her to stop or to be normal or grow up. INFPs are crazy. I know I'm crazy. I have imaginary friends. I have a parallel universe in my mind that I like to go to. I know none of that stuff is really real, but in my creative mind, it is. I can talk to my characters. And one of the things I was in my relationships and it's really crazy is my characters are an extension of me, but they're completely different people. They're different people. Like my other character will say something stupid or ballsy that I would never ever say or think and it sounds weird because it's coming out of my brain it's really strange but if she opens up that side to you and she's silly with you or creative or creatively stupid or whatever it is and she's able to do that in front of you and it's something you norm normally wouldn't do don't the worst thing you could say is oh my god please stop she'll shut down like a virgin's legs like she will be so embarrassed 
and she'll feel like you're not someone she can do this with. And you know what, you know what will happen? Eventually, she'll find a guy or somebody else that is like her, and he, she, he may not have her same personality, but he he's into that. He's like, oh my god, this girl's hot. He'll actually engage with her crazy side and her imagination. And engaging in an INFP's imagination, that's a big turn on to an INFP. And that's why INFPs also get along well with kids, because kids don't look at us like that. You can, I mean, I, I've been around kids and they're always attracted to me. No matter where I go, kids always find me. They, I don't know how they know. I cannot say anything. I cannot look at them, but they automatically come over and want to play with me. And I can't help it. They have toys. I'll go to this whole other place and I'll be playing with their toys and we'll have this whole feature length movie. And then I'll pretend that the credits are going up and I'll use my hands and fingers as the credits. And the parents are just like, can you babysit? And I'm like, no. But that's just how we are. And kids accept us as we are. If you're going to date an INFP, you have to accept her as she is. Don't tell her to fucking grow up. That is the worst thing that you can tell an INFP. Even if she's an adult, she understands she's an adult. She doesn't need you to tear her down and tell her that she's being stupid or acting like a child. That's what INFPs do. They act like children. If you don't want to be with one, then don't be with one. But don't try to change her in that manner. Celebrate it with her. Understand that you have a crazy-ass girlfriend, but she's not like anything else that you'll ever experience. And celebrate that with her. If you can do that with her, she will love you. Trust me. And it will cause her to open up much more. Now, the next thing is work on your delivery with your honesty. INFPs love honesty. So if you're going to do it since they're so feely, you have to also preface it with them. Say, can I be honest? Or just be honest with them. But if you come off doing something in a hateful manner, um, they're going to they're gonna go away. Now, if you say something along the lines, let's see, let's see an example I can use. Um, it's my phone, sorry. Yeah, if you say, like, if she asks you um, about a dress, right? We don't usually do this. Well, I don't, maybe other girls do. But if she says, does this dress look good? She expects you to be honest. Don't tell her, oh, you look great. And her ass is riding up inside the dress. Like, don't, don't do that. Um, tell her, um, I don't really like it on you. And she's like, why? She's not trying to trick you, I promise. She's not trying to trick you. She said, why don't you like it? Unless she's crazy. Like, she's crazy crazy. I don't mean imaginative crazy. I mean crazy. Um, she'll ask you because she generally wants to know. Why don't you like it? It's too yellow. It doesn't fit your contrast. Okay. A mature INFP will, will appreciate that. Because she wants to know that she can trust you. That if she goes out and she doesn't look good, that someone's got her back to help her. My boyfriend will tell me, like, mm, that's how you're going to go with your hair. I'm like, yeah, it's fluffy. Can't you do it this way? Oh, fine. You know, or you may want to do, you may get the opinion and not listen to it, but at least you can trust that the person you're with is honest with you about how they feel. If you feel a certain way about something she said, be honest with her. Don't be afraid of her. Be honest with her. INFPs also are turned on to people who can handle them who are not afraid of them. That was something that I hated in my past relationships. I do tend to be very assertive if somebody is too submissive. I don't like playing the man role, but if the man's not playing the man role, then I automatically assume that role, and it's not very fun. I don't like that. And I will even tell the guys, like, hey, say no to me sometimes. Scold me. Do something. Don't agree with me all the time. You can be your own person. Just don't be mean. Like, you know, and even if you're mean sometimes, come back around and say, look, I'm sorry. I was an asshole. They'll, they'll appreciate it. Trust me. But work on your delivery. Um, also, like, um, delivery also means that if they want to tell you something, and I can only speak from experience, but if they want to tell you something and you're like, you know, what do you want? And they're like, whoa, are you okay? Yeah, I just, you know, they'll shut up. They will shut their guards down. INFPs are like uh, a mechanic castle that has walls and if an, an INFP has been hurt and they don't want to they don't want to be a burden to anyone else or hurt anyone else they will lock down those walls the, the metal thing will just go up and shut tight when you do that that will cause them to feel apprehensive about approaching you at all if the minute you do that or you have an attitude with them you may be deep in thought and you they'll be like what's wrong and they, they won't tell you now if you're lucky and you press her for it she'll tell you hey I don't like the way you answered me. You talked to me like I was a freaking bum off the street. It made me feel like shit. 
And she'll be angry when she tells you. And you're like, sorry, you know, this and that. But if you guys are just getting to know each other, she probably won't even trust you enough to tell you that. Because you've just basically, your delivery um, has basically just told her to fuck off. And she's like, okay, well, sucks to be you then. She may like you, but her pride and her willingness to not want to be hurt is going to override her want to be with you. And she's just going to, as a matter of fact, it's very easy for her to lose attraction to you. We tend to put people on a pedestal and, or we tend to look highly upon people. We basically think you're innocent until proven guilty. And then what will happen is we'll put people up here. And then once they start to do really shitty things like that, then we start cutting down the points until there's nothing left. There's no redeeming qualities and they'll just move on. They'll, they'll lose attraction to you. In their mind, they would make love to you and they're like, oh, this is a great person. And then you show your true colors and they're like, okay, I'm done with this person. It's not what I thought I'd be or I thought I, um, I, he's not what I thought he would be. So I'm just going to move on to something else. Eh, whatever. No skin off my bones. If she didn't get deep enough with you, it's, she's not going to miss you. She's just going to silently slink away into the shadows. So be very careful. Um, I'm not saying you should walk on eggshells around them, but don't talk to her like you would talk to your to some heart person off the street they are very feely infps so be nice to them if she doesn't answer you like that do not answer her like that um and if you if there is something wrong you know when you say look you realize that you've done that go back and, and apologize to her say look i am so so freaking sorry i didn't mean to snap at you like that my dad died or all these people were doing, i took it out on you i'm so sorry can you forgive me please and she'll forgive you, but she'll watch because every bad thing that happens that, you know, she'll put it in the back of her mind, but she'll catalog it so that she can compare it to later behaviors. And if she finds that six times later down the line, there's not a good excuse why you do the same thing you did back then, she realizes a pattern and she'll realize that you're probably not a nice person and she'll leave you. Okay, so... Also, INFPs don't open up very well and tend to bottle up their feelings, especially if you've done something wrong. So if she's not saying things to you and she's acting kind of weird, pay attention to her social cues and ask her what's wrong. Sometimes you will need to press her, especially if you're the one that hurt her feelings. You will need to press the hell out of her. If she's worth it enough for you to do that, then whatever. If you decide that, you know what, I don't really want to go through all this trouble, she won't follow you. She may ask you something, you know, or whatever, and you're like, oh, whatever. That basically tells her that she can't trust you, that you, you don't even really like her, and she'll just leave. She'll never talk to you again, and you'll be on her list of people that she doesn't like, and it's very hard for them to not like people. Okay, so the next one, have like interests and don't be superficial. If you're a very ditzy person, an, an INFP will hang out with you, but she won't take you seriously as a partner. She'll be like, oh, this person is kind of boring, like... Uh, she does he doesn't have any interests it's very easy if you guys like video games together or if you like you have some common interests like youtube movies whatever it is if you have a common interest you can talk passionately about stuff because infps are very phys phys uh, phil yeah, philosophical and very intellectual when it comes to certain things especially their passions and if you're just like so man it's hot outside today she's like yeah so what you gonna do tomorrow tomorrow we hate small talk. If that's all there there is to your personality, we're going to get tired of you really fast. You're not deep enough for us. So we're just like, oh, this is the waste of my time. You're not helping me to grow mentally or emotionally. You're not helping me at all. I'm just literally wasting time here with you. So she's going to leave. She's going to be like, yeah, whatever. I had this person who used to call me. I think he liked me or something. And he would call me and I would talk to him and I'm like, hey, such and such and such and such. And he would never talk. He'd just listen. So I'm like, so what about you? Oh, uh, no. Uh, one sentence. So after a while, because he would always call me nonstop. Like, you're running me down. I didn't call you. You call me five times in a row. And you don't say anything. So I would ask him. I said, hey, dude, like, why do you call me? Like, you, you, you call me, but you never say anything. I'm always the one talking. And he literally says, I just like hearing your voice. Okay, but, you know, I'd like to have a conversation with you. And if you're just going to call me so I do all the talking, then there's really nothing in it for me. Like, you just like hearing my voice. Maybe you want to beat off to it or something. That's great. Give me something to beat off to. Like, I don't have anything. You're not giving me anything. 
you're basically just sucking up my time and my energy. And the worst part is he'll call, and I don't pick up, and literally, in consecutively, he will call nine times in a row. Stop for half an hour, call ten more times in a row. Until my parents used to be like, are you going to pick up the phone? Like... So don't do that. If you're, if you have to have some kind of interest, you have to be a person with actual interest so you can introduce the INFP to these interests. Because we like learning about new stuff too. If it's about sports and something that the INFP is not interested in, she'll humor you, but she may not have a long-term relationship with you because you don't share some interests. Even if you have different interests, your interests usually have to complement hers. So let's say that she does video stuff or photography and she wants to do videos or movies. You do audio and lighting. You don't do the same thing, but it falls within the same genre. Then you guys have something to look forward to. You have something to work together, but you can do your own projects. Stuff like that. However, if you're a soldier or you're someone who does engineering and she does something on the opposite side of the world or completely different from you, that's not going to last. And she's going to realize it. She's going to end up meeting people or finding people or even searching out people who have that like interest. And the weird thing with INFPs is we may not, we may not be so um, social, but if we're in a relationship with someone and we, we can actually feel that we're lacking in that way with that relationship, we will search for people and we don't do that. But we will search for other people who have what you can't give us. And that's very dangerous because then what will happen, she'll find someone that fits her or compliments her that will not be you and she'll be more interested in that person. And then she'll slowly start to slip away from you. Or if you're in a relationship with her already, she'll just break up with you. Okay, so the other thing is, do not take advantage of an INFP or just demand or assume that they should do something for you. That is the worst thing you can do. Unless you guys are role playing or you're dom and sub and that's the way you've done things, um, don't do that because that's going to make her feel underappreciated. INFPs tend to give a lot of themselves when they're in love and if you've been hurt or if they've been hurt before, they, they'll still do it. They'll be a lot less uh, trusting in the beginning, but when they do start to open up and you start to show that you're taking advantage of them, they'll it's a huge turn off to them they'll automatically see you as the people that hurt them and it's not fair to you but that's just something that you have to be aware of because that's how they're going to perceive it show them that you appreciate them tell them sometimes that look you cook all the time you clean all the time let me do this sit down let me do this for you and she may fight she may like no no tell her no be okay with taking compliments and be okay with taking service you shouldn't have to do all of it and you do that. That will make her appreciate you and respect you. Um, show them affection. This is a big one. INFPs don't like to be um, overly like hugged and stuff, but it's very important that you show them affection. If you're if you're cold, like if you're an INF an INTJ and you're not used to that, or an ENTJ, and you're not used to that, learn because that is something that is very important to them. They want to know that you're even though they're shy in public. A lot of INFP girls are going to want to know that you're not afraid to hold their hand because we overthink things to the fifth degree. We're very internal with our thinking and we're not very outward, outwardly spoken. So whereas an ENFP or an ESFP will say, how come you won't hold my hand? And she'll actually come out and say it. Hold my hand. She'll actually say it. We won't. We'll just wonder, why doesn't he hold my hand in public? Like, does he like somebody else? And then we'll start to go down this horrible road. Maybe he doesn't really like me. Does he think I'm stink? Oh my God, he's ashamed of me. Does he have someone else? Like, maybe I shouldn't be. And then we'll, we'll, we'll make ourselves crazy because we're not, we're afraid to actually, it's not that we're afraid, we just naturally don't do that. And before you know it, your INFP will have this attitude. Six hours later, <laughs> from the event having taken place and you're like what's wrong you've been salty all day and she'll be like nothing she won't tell you because she's already convinced herself in her mind that you're a bad guy <laughs> so show her affection and ask her what's wrong like are you okay press her you sometimes have to press an infp and so you guys have been dating long enough or you're married and you know each other well enough that she's okay with with opening up to you don't make her feel sorry about doing it either but if you press her and she says well and she'll beat around the bush and it will be annoying for people like INTJs and ENTJs. It will be freaking annoying and you'll like, just say it. Give them time. Trust me. I know it's like chalk, like nails on a chalkboard when she's like, um, well, 
as, as annoying as it is for you, trust me, it is that much harder for her to open up to her feelings to you. So the worst thing you could do during that time while you're pressing her to tell her what's wrong, uh, for her to tell you what's wrong is hurry up. Like mm -mm, that will be like, she'll just run away. <laughs> I'm telling you, like we're simple, but we're complex in that matter. Um, just be patient. Being patient, trust me, will it will bring you a long way with an INFP. And she'll have to probably assume this other persona just to be brave enough to talk to you. But that persona is usually cold, calculating, and very bitchy. You don't want that person either. For us to be something that we're not or to play a character that we're not naturally able to play, we have to actually assume another character. And sometimes we stay in that character. And sometimes that means that we're emotionally cut off from you to be that character. You want us to be direct and cold and direct with what we're saying and not feely? We're going to be bitchy and cold to you. So that's, it, it's, it's really strange. I know it is. The other thing is show her that she's your priority. Now, if you're young people and you have college and stuff, uh, be honest with her from the get-go what this is. She'll be honest with you too. But if you're saying that you want a future with her, show her that you want a future. If you tell her that, oh, I want to spend time with you, and then three weeks at a time you don't talk to her, you hang out with everybody else, all your other friends, female friends that are not her, she's gonna, you're, you're gonna lose her. She's gonna be like, this person's not taking me seriously. They don't want me. Mm. At most, you'd be lucky if it's a very naive and young I, um, INFP, like she's like 13 or something. Then she won't know and she'll fall in love with you and she'll chase you and then she'll learn. After you hurt her, she'll learn. Um, most mature INFPs don't have time for that shit. So they'll just be like, oh, I'll, I'll just leave. I want to make you my priority. Like a, a relationship for an INFP is very important. Their career, the things they like, a lot of them, their families, and you are a priority. And they're very good at balancing that. They usually put their friends at the bottom. But when it comes to their relationship, shh, they are very, very good at um, at balancing up their relationship with their, their stuff because you are part of their life. If you make her like 16th down the list, she'll think to herself that, you're not serious. And if you're like, well, I have to build myself up and do this, then she's just going to think or say to you that you're not ready for a relationship then. If you just want someone to screw, then go on dating sites and do that. But if you're looking for a natural, an actual long-term relationship, you're going to have to learn to balance because that's basically going to tell her that if you guys had kids later on, you'd spend all your time away from her, which will open you up to cheat with someone else. And if you had kids, you wouldn't ever see them because you don't know how to manage your time and manage your relationships. That's very important to INFPs. Unless she's someone who's like, I don't really care. If, INF if an INFP is not really in love with you, she won't care. Or if she's into somebody else, she won't care. So that's also a sign to look out for. Um, next thing, we're almost done. When your partner, the INFP, shares his or her feelings, Focus on being understanding and not try to fix everything. INTJs and ENTJs and even some ISTJs, they have this, this tendency to want to fix everything. She's crying on your shoulder and you're like, you know, you should do this. Sometimes she doesn't need that. She doesn't need that. If she's crying or you can see that she's hurt and maybe you won't know it right away because you're getting to know her. If you're an INTJ and ENTJ, you won't be able to tell that right off the bat. But if you've been with her long enough and you know how she feels when she's distraught, you know that's not the time to say, let's do this, or this is what we're going to do. She doesn't want you to fix anything right that minute. Not saying she's not going to want you to fix it at all, but at that moment, the only thing she wants to hear from you is, I'm so sorry, baby. She wants you to hug her. She wants to feel safe. That's what she wants. She doesn't need you telling her what to do to go see this. That And the worst thing you could do also, and INTJs are bad at this, the worst thing you could do is like, well, I don't know what to tell you. The fuck? Like, don't say that. <laughs> don't say anything. Just listen to her and hug her. Say, I'm sorry. Or say, I'm here. Or say, I love you. I know that doesn't come naturally to you, but if you're going to be dating an INFP or an ENFP, you're going to have to do that because that's, how, that's their feeling language. And just like how they have to learn some of your languages, you have to learn some of theirs. The other thing is be gentle and tactful. INFPs take things very personally. 
And that, that kind of falls into what I said before. If you're going to say something, don't be mean. You don't have to have a snarky attitude with it. And if that's your natural way of saying things, you're, you're going to find that you're going to start to change the way that you speak with your INFP. You're going to be, and the thing, it's wonderful. You teach them to be more tough, they teach you to be more soft. Because being with an INFP will ensure that you also learn to talk with people outside more appropriately. You may find that you're like, oh, I don't give a damn what people think. But you can lose a lot of opportunities with people just based off of your tact or lacking tact. And the INFP will help with that. Okay, um, the other thing is um, give her her quiet time. Like, you can give her a quiet time. She, you can have your quiet time. Let her have her quiet time. It is fine for her to go away sometimes. Your INFP may go away for weeks. And it's okay for you to go and fish her out. But if you tell her, look, I need, I, I, you, you can't go away and think and, and do all that, that's going to make her feel cornered, especially early on in the relationship. If you guys are, like, really close with each other and you've been that way for a while, then it's not really going to matter. She's going to be used to you, but if you guys are just starting out and you want to get her to trust you, just let her, let her have some space sometimes. Come in and say, are you okay? I'm here if you want to talk. I love you. Or I like you. Or, or I'm here. And then just leave. And just, you know, pop in every now and then to let her know that you're still thinking about her. And, you know, that's basically it. Also, make her feel beautiful. Make her feel beautiful. A lot of INFPs do, since they're very feely, if they've been hurt before or cheated on before, they tend to be very insecure with certain things. So tell her that you, and, and be honest with her too. Because if she thinks that she's not beautiful, she knows she's not beautiful in society standards, she's not going to want to be with you. Um, but if she's okay looking, tell her. You know, like, you know, I think you're beautiful. I'm very attracted to you. And be honest with her as a guy. Be like, look, you know, I do like pretty girls. And sometimes I will look at pretty girls. Or I will look at porn or I will do whatever. But you're most important. And I think that you're very pretty. The reason why I'm with you is because I'm attracted to you. And maybe you will have to do that for every, <laughs> every year of your life. Every day you, you tell her that. Or once in a while, you tell her. Or if she dresses up for you. Sometimes she's doing it to impress you. And sometimes she's doing it to impress other guys. Girls are like that. Guys, you, you, some people will be like, oh, well, you know, she's trying to cheat. No. But at the same time, she wants to feel wanted. And if she's not getting that from you, she's going to want to get it somewhere else. She's going to want it. Sometimes, not even if he's a girl, too, she doesn't like attention. But if she notices that she's starving for it in, a, in an area or in a relationship where she shouldn't be, she's going to start to look for it somewhere else. Not that she wants to cheat on you, but some guy telling her, wow, god damn, you look pretty. And she'll tell you too, because INFPs are usually very honest, unless they, they don't trust you. Um, she'll tell you, yeah, this guy was checking me out today. And sometimes she'll want you to be jealous because she'll want to, to know or for you to give her some sign that you're still into her, that she's still attractive to you. Somebody else comes along and they treat her like that, She's going to start to weigh her options. I feel better with this person than I do with that person. Mm, I'm going to go with this person. So another thing, um, this is the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with. If you're in a relationship with an, INT, with an INFP and you've been there for a while, don't stop working on it. Don't think that because you've gotten the INFP that you no longer have to work to impress her. INFPs are very imaginative and creative and they'll want to do different things. And if you're at that point where you're like, ah, I already have you, so I don't have to try. And you spend more time trying to impress other females. She will leave you. If she's a cheater, she will cheat on you. And I would hope that she wouldn't, but she would leave you. I would leave. Because I would start to realize that this person just, I'm just a notch. They would want to work on their relationship. INFPs usually want to work on their relationship. They're very dedicated and loyal to people they're in love with. So they're always going to work to make the relationship better, to keep it spicy, to keep it new. And it goes both ways. If she's the only one doing that, you're not putting anything into it, she's going to find somebody else to give her that attention. And you do not want that. And maybe you do. Guys seem to do really well when there's comp competition. If a guy sees that other girls like his girl, it restarts his attraction to his female because he realizes that, through other guys liking her, that is validation that the female is a good catch. And then he'll want to fight again to keep the female. And that will up his attraction. So sometimes, naturally, instinctively, girls will do that. Not just INFPs. Girls will do that. 
And they're not, sometimes they're not even doing it to get at you. Sometimes they're doing it because it's just natural. It's just a natural instinct. Just like it's a natural instinct for guys to look at other women, it's a natural instinct for girls to want guys to look at them. It's just the way things are. But if you want to keep her interested, you have to be interested. You have to work on that. And it, like I said, it, it goes both ways. You can't be the only one doing it. If you're the one, the only one doing it, she's not doing it, she doesn't care that much about you. But if she's putting in the work and you're not putting in any work, she will stop putting in the work and she'll find somebody else. Slowly and surely. So you don't want that to happen. So anyways, guys, that is how to get an INFP girl to trust you. Like I said, one bag doesn't fit all. A lot of this I speak from experience. Um, so if you guys have any questions or if you want to discuss anything in the comments, feel free to do so. Or if you have any other questions, um, just ask. <laughs> See you guys later. Thank you for watching.